want to talk a little bit about one of the HPV associated cancers, anal cancer. Anal cancer is a rare cancer, but its incidence is increasing. In 2024, it's expected to have just over 10,500 cases in the United States. And this reflects about a 12% increase from the year prior. While most individuals are diagnosed after their fifth decade of life, about a third of patients can be diagnosed prior to the age of 50. And the risk is higher for women compared to men. The main risk factor of anal cancer is infection by HPV or the human papillomavirus. This is preventable with vaccination. In fact, 90% of all cases of anal cancer are associated with HPV infection. Other patients at high risk are those who have immunosuppression, such as HIV, or patients who've had a solid organ transplant. Patients who have chronic anal irritation or fistulas are at higher risk of developing an anal cancer. Patients who've had a prior history of cervical, vaginal, vulva, or penile cancers, essentially other HPV-associated cancers are also at increased risk. And cigarette smoking is also associated with a higher risk of anal cancer. So what's the link with HPV and anal cancer? Well, we know that HPV encodes two proteins that bind to and inactivate two of our main tumor suppressor genes. The gene TP53, which is considered the guardian of the genome, one of the most frequently altered genes in all of cancer, is inactivated by a protein made by the human papillomavirus. Another tumor suppressor, the RB gene, is inactivated by a different protein generated by the human papillomavirus. So it shuts down our checks and balances in our own cells to cause them to grow and proliferate in an uncontrolled manner. Most of anal cancers associated with a variant of HPV called variant 16, whereas less commonly we can see another high-risk variant, HPV 18, but overall about 90% of all anal cancers are associated with an HPV infection. Risk factors for HPV infection include multiple sexual partners, receptive anal intercourse, sexual activity at a young age, and a history of condyloma or anal intraepithelial neoplasia. Among patients with HIV, the risk of anal cancer is about twice that in patients compared to patients who have no HIV. When we see the, uh, the success of the heart therapy, which is the highly active antiretroviral therapy, this has resulted in H HIV patients living longer and healthier lives. Essentially, it's made HIV a chronic disease. But in contrast to other cancers associated with HIV, which have been decreasing with heart therapy, the incidence of anal cancer is actually rising following heart therapy given the prolongation of the disease. Anal intraepithelial neoplasia progression means that we can monitor or watch as our normal cells become slightly abnormal and they have something called dysplasia. A condyloma is a medical word for a wart, which is an abnormal growth, but it's not a cancer. It's just a benign abnormal growth. But those cells can continue to go on and become abnormal and become more what we call dysplastic until ultimately they become carcinoma in situ or cancer in situ until they become invasive cancer. And so there's a progression from normal to abnormal to cancer in this disease. But despite this progression, there's no guidelines on screening. The same progression is done or seen in cervical cancer. The success of the pap smear has been able to identify women with abnormal cells and intervene early to prevent the development of cancer. But anal cancer, given the rarity of the disease, there's no published guidelines on screening. And any future screening efforts likely would need to be specific to high-risk populations. 
but there's growing interest in developing trials, evaluating new ways of looking at and integrating screening into patients with high-risk disease. Anal cancer is preventative, either through sexual abstinence, but truly HPV vaccination is the best long-term approach for reducing anal cancer risk as well as other HPV-associated cancer risks. In fact, one impressive statistic is the fact that HPV vaccination, if universally done worldwide, has the potential to reduce cancer incidence by 4%. There's few interventions that can overall reduce the burden of cancer by 4% worldwide. As we discussed previously, the CDC recommends HPV vaccination as part of its routine childhood immunizations. This is routine vaccination in boys and girls at the age of 11 to 12, or as young as nine in patients with high risk disease. If patients have not been vaccinated in their childhood, there's the opportunity and recommendation to vaccinate them up to the age of 26. Whereas in patients who are aged 27 to 45, there's a clinical decision-making conversation that you are encouraged to have with your primary care physician.